Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thanks, for your, uh, thanks for your patience. We had very little downtime between the last presentation and uh, for the AAD program and this one. Um, but it's my pleasure to welcome you to the Master of Architecture <laughs> curriculum uh, presentation. I am uh, Mario Gooden, director of the Master of Architecture program. And I want to welcome those of you who are here in person. And I think we actually have quite a large number um, of uh, of your cohort who are with us, uh, with us online. Um, really, I'm delighted to, uh, to, uh, to have you here today. Um, uh, I think the room is still a bit buzzing from the Dean's presentation uh, at, at 1.30. Um, and I also want to congratulate um, each of you uh, on being accepted to the, to the Master of Architecture program. Um, as the Dean, uh, explained and, uh, and spoke about um, earlier, um, our planet is going through enormous uh, environmental, social, and technological changes. Um, these manifest you know, at, at a number of different scales um, in ways in which uh, that affect the bodies, thinking about space, thinking about ecologies, politics, aesthetics, how these things are entangled um, and how they intersect. Um, these intersections are the terrain um, of the various disciplines within the school and certainly uh, the terrain of which we work in within the Master of Architecture program. And so that's why what we do here is so important. Our planet is going through enormous uh, environmental, social, technological changes. Um, these manifest themselves you know, in various scales um, in terms of the ways in which they affect the body, uh, space, ecologies, politics, and uh, what we investigate here within the MARC program is how these are entangled and how they intersect. Um, these intersections are the terrain for the, for the various programs at the school, um, and this is why you know, what we do here is so important and um, why we want to be engaged in a conversation with you um, about this. As the dean mentioned um, in his presentation, GSAP has always been at the forefront um, of leading change in, in our disciplines, starting over 30 years ago when, when I was a student here with the paperless studios, the first paperless studios, which not only transformed the academy, but actually radicalized uh, architectural practice at the time. Now it's, uh, now it's very common. Um, these, uh, uh, that change and the change that's needed now um, is critical and must be both uh, radically experimental um, and politically uh, engaged. This is what our school uh, excels at, this is what the school stands for, and this is what we work um, so hard to, uh, to intensify. You know, so here we are. Um, uh, you're sort of getting a taste of this today um, on, your, on your visit through uh, uh, through, the, uh, through our facilities. Um, of course, there's Avery Hall and uh, the architecture program, the Master of Architecture program sits on top of, uh, on top of uh, the Avery, uh, Avery Library, which is the world's foremost um, collection of architectural uh, art and architectural uh, journals, books, periodicals, um, et cetera, um, but not only and so here you see our studios, and hopefully you're having some opportunities to visit the studios this afternoon. Um, again, Avery Library. Um, hope that you will become intimately uh, familiar with. I always tell my students, um, you should know almost what every volume is in, uh, in the library. So know that AA 1153 dot M37 as a particular architect. So I want you to become familiar you know, with the volumes um, in the library. And so when we say, you know, perhaps look at this architect or this building, Wikipedia is not a primary source. Go downstairs to Avery Library. OK, that's my little rant about the importance you know, of being in this place and having this relationship uh, uh, with Avery. But not only with Avery, and so here you see Avery Hall. We are underneath the ground here. You know, our programs and uh, the spaces that you'll be using sort of seep underneath the ground and into Fairweather. 
you know, as well as to the, you know, to the makerspace. You know, these are all of our sites of, of intellectual and creative production. Um, the makerspace you know, is the space in which you know, uh, we say that architecture is the materialization of concept. You know, and this is where, uh, you know, where we conduct experiments, where we think about how do those concepts, uh, concepts materialize. And so, you know, what distinguishes uh, the Master of Architecture program here at GSAP? Well, one, you will hear a number of us say, a number of faculty, also other students, that we do not presume to know what architecture is. That architecture is not a given. You know, these are, these are the questions. And that architecture is not a preconceived condition. Um, so architecture is, uh, is a question. Um, it's a question that not only occurs uh, within the design studio, it's a question that occurs you know, throughout the curriculum. Uh, and we're gonna talk a little bit about the, the different sequences, uh, sequences of the curriculum uh, this afternoon. But first, I wanna sort of come back to, um, to something that the dean mentioned uh, earlier today, which is the notion that what we do here you know, is filled with certain kinds of uncertainties. And what uh, we've been thinking about is how can we conduct, let's say, a radical pedagogy of uncertainty within the Master of Architecture program. Um, in the source of self-regard, selected essays, speeches, and meditations by, uh, by Toni Morrison, uh, Morrison writes, my effort to manipulate American English was not to take standard English and use the vernacular uh, to decorate or paint over it, but to carve away at its secretions of deceit, blindness, ignorance, paralysis, and sheer malevolence. So that certain kinds of perceptions were not only available, but were inevitable. So likewise, our program seeks to carve away and question the disciplinary boundaries of architecture so that certain kinds of perceptions and representations that have always existed uh, are, are given presence. And this notion of uh, a radical pedagogy of uncertainty um, actually goes back a bit to a Columbia uh, economist uh, named Albert O. Hirschman, who wrote about the concept of possibilism and uncertainty. So Hirschman wrote, unless novelty, creativity, and uniqueness take place, large-scale social change uh, cannot occur. Uh, in the first place, if all elements of social dynamics were already known, reactionary forces could eagerly, easily foresee and preempt them. So the Master of Architecture program, we have our design studios, uh, a tech sequence, uh, representation, which is part of the visual studies, uh, uh, visual studies here at, at GSEP, history theory, professional practice, and electives. And so I, just going to go through these a little bit to kind of show you how they break down. So in, uh, in each of our, our semesters, um, we will have, in, for example, in uh, first year and second year, uh, eight studios. Uh, the very first studio that you'll take in this fall um, will be a studio that you'll be assigned to. But then from then on out, you actually get to select the faculty that you would like to work with. Um, in the second semester through the, through the sixth semester. Um, then you see the tech sequence um, and its sections uh, in the third and fourth and fifth semester, uh, history theory, uh, QAH1 and QAH2 in the first and second semester. Um, and uh, then you see uh, our other uh, professional practice and electives and, uh, and visual studies there in red. So in our, in our first year, uh, which is part of our, our, our core, um, going back to this issue of, of questions, um, we're thinking about uh, questions and knowledge production. Uh, in the second year, engage practice. So then how do we uh, uh, implement uh, and begin to kind of put all of these things together um, in scenarios such as the housing studio, which happens in the, um, in the third semester, or in the fourth semester, 
where, uh, where currently we're ex exploring contested territories. And then in the fifth and sixth semester, the Master of Architecture student, you, in your third year, are actually combined with the Master of Science in Advanced Architectural Design, the AED program. Um, and uh, as you see there, there are 18 to 19 studios you know, forming this vast ecosystem of, of possibilities uh, for you to, uh, to engage with, um, with students who not only started with you in, in first year, but now students who are bringing you know, uh, varied experiences from all around the world. And as I said, um, you know, beginning in the, the second semester, you get to select the, the critic that you would like to work with in other semesters, um, in other uh, courses, you're selecting the, uh, the sections that you, would, uh, that you would like to be in according to, to the time and also according to, uh, and according to the professors. So let's just take a very quick look at the, at the text sequence and you will be hearing from, uh, from faculty uh, shortly. Uh, but the text sequence is coordinated by Professor Lola Ben-Alan. And, uh, and in the text sequence, you know, the, the text sequence has been framed around issues of equity and health, uh, climate and energy that you'll be introduced to in the, in the first semester in terms of thinking about the environment um, at, a, at a kind of conceptual level, uh, structures, thinking about uh, high tech as well as low tech, and by low tech, we mean uh, 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 earth materials, uh, plant-based materials, um, and also design-build, opportunities for design-build at a number of different scales. And here you see, uh, this is from our tech shop from 2022. Uh, Professor Ben Alan is also the director of the Natural Materials Lab, and I think some of you probably, you visited the maker studio uh, this morning and also the Natural Materials Lab. Uh, this is uh, work from the last year from, uh, from Tech 2 that deals with structures, um, structures beginning at, a, at if you will, a, uh, a, a conceptual level. But then by the time in Tech 5, we're actually thinking about architectural details and you're inventing details and working on, uh, working on details. You know, and this is a team of students um, not only working on the details, but thinking about how those, those details get represented in the, in the film that they made. And this is from the Inside Out uh, Design Build Seminar that's led by Professor Lori Hawkinson and Professor Galia Sol Solomonoff. <clears throat> this is from last year. Um, you saw the the Avery Spot, which was the red version of that in 2021, and this was called the Avery Web, uh, or GSAP Web, from 2022. And then representation, and we've broadened uh, our kind of thinking about uh, visual studies uh, to think not only in terms of, of data, um, and technology, um, but also how we conceptualize drawing, and that drawing is much more than image making, but drawing is a way of thinking. Drawing is a, a production of a certain kind of, certain kind of knowledge. But then also when we think about computation and we think about, you know, in this case, in this case BIM, how do we want to rethink something like, like BIM? Um, how do we want to break it, actually? Those are the kinds of experiments that we want to do do here, not just take you know, what we already know, what's already going, in, going on in practice, uh, but actually push the boundaries of what's going on in practice. And this is from, uh, from Professor Mark Suramaki's seminar of section. So you know, a section or a building section, again, is a way of thinking about space. It, it is perhaps a way to even begin a project, such that the section is not simply something that gets cut from an architectural model but is actually a way of generating ideas. Fantastic visual, um, uh, vil visual artist and film artist, uh, Josh Begley, uh, who joined us this semester and is teaching 
uh, this class points unknown uh, cartographic uh, narratives. Um, you know, America is maps, maps are ghosts, white and layered with people and places I see through. And Josh is very much interested not only in, um, uh, in the use of, of data, but data's uh, relationship to representation. And then this fall, um, uh, choreographer and performance artist uh, Jonathan Gonzalez um, is teaching a new course called Embodied Research. So we're actually thinking about architectural representation in terms of, in terms of performance. And hopefully this is going to make the School of the Arts a little bit jealous because we're able to bring Jonathan into GSAP uh, and uh, not up at Man Manhattanville. You know, also in terms of representation is the, the graphics project. So as you uh, uh, work through your three years here, um, there'll be various points throughout the curriculum where you are you know, producing books. Um, there is the uh, the Maker Graph Studio that's taught by Ada Tola and Giuseppe Lignano, but also in terms of graduation, you'll be producing a portfolio book um, that is really about, let's say, your argument or your position relative to, to architecture and to architectural knowledge production. And then in history theory, just briefly, and you'll hear from Professor Reinhold Martin, who is the coordinator of the history theory uh, sequence. Um, these are perhaps a couple of images that you saw earlier from, from the dean um, wanting to bring back up race and modern architecture because, you know, that project, you know, started at GSAP in 2016, I believe, and then was published into this significant, sig very, very significant book uh, in 2021, um, edited by Professor Mabel O. Wilson, Charles Davis, and Irene Ching. And then recently, we had the uh, Detlef Mertens uh, lecture. Um, uh, and this was the, Reinhold, the, what number of it? it it's been a while with Diana Martinez uh, just this past uh, February. And Professor Laura Kurgan's uh, Conflict Urbanism. And of course, professional practice. Um, professional practice that you saw primarily happens in the last years in terms of the, uh, in the third year in terms of the required course, but actually prof professional practice occurs throughout the sequence, starting with, uh, starting with the first semester in terms of thinking about representation, but also being engaged um, with city agencies like, uh, like NYCHA uh, during the housing semester, um, and uh, we often have uh, people from the professional world, whether or not they are architects or artists or what have you, come in to give weekly lectures in all of our studio courses. And these are just a couple of examples from the last few years uh, from our uh, professional practice course um, and events including the Women in Architecture. This was from 20, uh, 2020. And then, as the dean mentioned uh, uh, briefly earlier today, uh, career services is also important. And then just to give you a little bit of a more taste of, of the design studio, some of the work from the second, uh, second semester, the first semester studio last, last fall, uh, Professor Christoph Kumpasch, And again, to say that, you know, that making, that in terms of thinking about detail, in terms of materiality, you know, begins in the very, very first studio. Um, doesn't just sort of wait until later, but making as a way of thinking uh, begins earlier on, early on. Professor Lindsay Wickstrom's uh, Core 2 studio. our reviews, and then the core three, which is the housing semester. And this is an opportunity uh, that you'll work in teams, teams of two in the, in the housing studio. 
And this is Professor Gary uh, Salomonov's studio, Professor Gary Bates. And these are, the housing studio has been working uh, in, uh, on site um, in New York City, uh, sometimes in Manhattan, uh, most recently in the, in the South Bronx. Um, this, uh, this studio was working uh, across the, the Harlem River, on the Bronx side of the, of the Harlem River. Some reviews. And then the advanced studios. An example from uh, David Benjamin's uh, Studio on Materials and Climate. Bernard Schumi's Studio on Studio from last fall. Uh, a studio that I taught um, on coloniality and modernity. And let me just ask, A.V., is it possible to get rid of this bottom thingy here? <laughs> no, it's not possible. OK, so we're getting some information that's cut off. But architecture at GSAP is not only about human bodies, it's also about, inter, uh, uh, about other relationships, about interspecies relationships. And this is a student who was you know, looking at water, but also uh, water mammals and, and pollution. This is uh, Professor Nayun Wang's uh, studio called Pine Air. <laughs> Yeah, so to give you all a bit of a taste, if you will, of you know, the studio, you know, what happens in the studios, but also the, the culture of studios and the conversations between uh, students and faculty. And then just recently, uh, our Kenny, Kenny week, so during your, your last semester, um, all of the advanced studios have an opportunity to travel internationally. Um, we had 19 studios this, this, uh, this spring, two weeks ago, just two weeks ago, traveling uh, around the world. And again, as the dean said, not in terms of promoting globalism, but actually learning, uh, not extracting, but learning with and learning from uh, various locales, various cultures, uh, about climate, about environmental issues, about uh, construction, about building technology. And then, uh, you know, just prior to graduation, you will produce uh, a portfolio that will be reviewed by, by all of the faculty as a, uh, as a requirement for, for graduation. We have something else here. Just an example of the portfolio, one of the prizes Actually, one of the main prizes for the MR program is called the McKim Prize. This is, uh, this is that student's uh, portfolio uh, of amazing work from, uh, from 2022. And then the end of the year show. So now that we're post-COVID, quote unquote, the end of the year show, that was your studio was. The end of the year show will be returning um, where we get to uh, sort of share with each other, um, you know, the work that's been produced for, uh, for that year you know, throughout the building. So here we are back at Avery. It's not quite that time of day yet. I think it's still pretty bright outside. Um, but now uh, we do have some time left. Um, I want to invite the, the faculty who are here who you will be getting to know uh, to come up, and we're happy to answer, uh, answer your questions. Uh, Professor Reinhold Martin, uh, Laurie Hawkinson, uh, Zia Jamaluddin, Professor Lola Benalan, Michael Bell.
lottery. And after the first semester, there's no lottery. That's right. right. There's no lottery because, you know, we're just trying to put people together in different ways and, you know, kind of mix it up. But then once that's finished, then starting from your second semester in first year, you have a lottery. And so the, in every semester, you will have a lottery. And the faculty will present the project. But in second semester, they might all be doing the same site. Right, but they each are different people, so they're gonna have a different take on that site, and they might have different issues they wanna emphasize. So they'll be presenting to you, all the people in first year, and then you will rank your choices. And that goes on for each of the semesters, and it gets more complicated in the third year, because there are 19 studios, as Mario said. So 19 studios, and you have to rank, you know, your choices, and I think, I may not be speaking out of turn, but I think, Dan, I mean, people usually get pretty much their, up to their fourth choice or something in the 19 studios, so it's not bad. Uh, yeah. Yeah, the, uh, it's hard to, I would have a hard time. Yeah, I'm sorry. Can you, I, um, the, the lotteries are all student run, so the faculty do not determine uh, anything about the lottery in terms of who, uh, in terms of the selection of, of the studios. And I think your question was also about um, what freedom the faculty have in terms of what, what they teach. Is, was that your question? Absolute freedom. <laughs> um, in, uh, in our first, first semester, um, the studios are coordinated um, in terms of, a, let's say, overall syllabus. But then each faculty or each critic has their own overlay to that syllabus. Um, and that actually goes for all three of the core semesters. Uh, so that's Studio One, Studio Two, and Studio Three, the housing studio, although the housing studio has tended for the last several years for um, each of the studios to work on the same site, but then each faculty might bring a particular emphasis to, uh, to that studio topic. And, and, the, and they're posted, the syllabuses are posted in advance, so you would get to see what they are, and you be, person, yes. Before, yes, before the lottery. And then in the advanced studios, uh, studio four, five, and, uh, and six, um, and Ziad, maybe you would like to say something about the, uh, studio four now. Studio four, uh, the current uh, focus is on contested territory, but each critic is actually working in a different Correct. So, region, if you will. Yeah, I coordinate advanced four studio, which is second year, second semester. And I think, like Mario said, each instructor, we are eight, uh, t takes their own site and topics of investigation. But there are opportunities where we all come together regularly across the studio period and interchange uh, critics, have students kind of uh, talking to each other and learning from each other. So there are these opportunities of intersections, let's say, between these different routes that each instructor takes. So this year, like every year, Advance 4 is uh, kind of regional in scope, but also it's territorial in scale. So we're looking at larger territories when we're addressing the architectural scale. So it's also multi-scalar in that sense. And uh, like uh, Mario said, we're looking at contested side this year, which is a little bit more specific than previous years. Yeah. superseding the rest of your courses. Kind of they, they act separate, it's like secondary to the studio. And, and some tend to be everything is very equal in how the workload, I guess, or the focus that we should be giving them is distributed. What do you, what do you all think um, Columbia uh, tends to be? Yes, yes. Music to my ears. But um, so I'm Reinhold Martin. I, I direct, or, or sorry, coordinate the um, History, history, sequence, history and theory sequence. So, okay, what do you think? Net zero by 2035? Do you think we can do it? Yeah, yeah? he says yes. He, he, yeah, so that's a question, right? That's a question that we share. I mean, whether we like it or not, we share this question. And there are many, many dimensions to this question that my colleagues can all speak to, and I'm sure you can too. Uh, and there are other ways to formulate that question. You know, that's a relatively pragmatic formulation. Can we do it, right? Uh, and it might, that's not, something like that might point towards studio. But even built into that question, like who that we may be and who, you know, 
who gets to be on the lifeboat, for example, and who doesn't, and so on and so forth with respect to the we, uh, and, and then the doing, uh, which is itself uh, uh, along the whole process that we're discussing when we're discussing matters related to planetary warming uh, is a centuries-long process, and so it, it does help to learn something about the origins, and, and particularly in the built environment, not just the technological, but the social, the economic, uh, and, the, and the political aspects of these, you know, kind of processes in their, in their deeper history. So these are kinds we actually, kind of things we try to, one way or the other, address kind of across the board in, in the curriculum to, to get to your question. So the history curriculum, by no means would, would we ever, with our, our side of the team, ever concede, you know, that, that we're sort of like the service wing, you know, and, and then the studio is the center of the action. And I think vice versa, you, you know, many of us have been working together for quite a while, and, and I can just think of all kinds of dialogues and debates and, and, and exchanges uh, in formal settings like this, but also in informal settings that, that, that in which that, you know, the kind of who is who's sort of what what is the center and so on is is really not the issue because we have these shared shared concerns so so that's really how I would invite you myself I think others might have other perspectives on on the same issue so love yeah I love your um, answer Reinhold and maybe also in respect to building tech um, and also in respect to what you said Mario about breaking BIM or breaking the software in tech and might would argue some here that tech three, four, and five are pretty kind of um, intensive and parallel to studio uh, because we really try to, especially in tech five, to kind of hack the software, not only learn software uh, tools, but also learn what are their limitations and how we can um, challenge what the software knows or what is the methodology involved in uh, um, softwares like LCA softwares, for instance, life cycle assessment. Um, and in building tech, many of the elective courses are project-based. So it's, in a sense, you're um, diving deep into a project that uh, involves both research and then design and execution, or what we said, design-build. So there is, a, there is a really commitment or a, um, um, there, there's a, a load and, and energy to that path as well in, in building tech elective courses too. I, I just should, I realize I should add, or add a cup just to, since people are also giving the kind of nuts and bolts that for the history sequence, um, Mario mentioned QAH, right? Which is like our secret code for questions in architectural history which is the first two semesters. So while people are, do, you, you all, you know, would be doing what Lola just described and what Marion Ziad and Lori just described about the, the, the first year, um, in, there are two semesters in the fall and spring of uh, basically our introduction to architectural history in the form of questions. And so that's the reason I'm uh, beginning with the question I did is that one way to, because these, we don't, go you know, into ancient history per se. You have opportunities for that later. This is really a, a history of the modern e period, beginning around 1800, which most accounts of the Anthropocene, right, the, the era of anthropogenic, human-induced climate change begin with. So it, w this is one way to think about this history sequence. It's a history of the Anthropocene. So, and, and so when you go into tech and studio and so on, you're working on the consequences of that. So maybe from our answers, you can learn that there is kind of a, a nice triangle around studio with the, well, maybe it's a, like a, a, another polygon, I don't know, uh, of history theory, representation, and visual building tech and professional studies that evolve around and with studio in parallel to studio and has a different weights to it. So it really depends on you and your, uh, the, the, the thesis that you're building throughout your your degree and uh, where you put you want to put your emphasis, um, and um, but th there there are opportunities around studio. That's yeah. We should we should move on to another question, but uh, I'm going to. So I have no idea exactly why you asked that question, but it's a very good one. And uh, 
there are moments in the studio where people seem to disappear for six or seven days, productivity plunges, and you find out that something was doing well with sequence or history theory sequence. So it definitely goes both ways. Listen, I would this. I came to the school 22 years ago, uh, and all of us came here. You know, very few of us actually went to school here. Mario did, um, and did very well out here. Um, <laughs> so, but. Uh, there's a scenario, it's a school that has a heavy dose in its history for the last 40 years of history theory and a heavy dose of design and a heavy dose of tech. And the degree to which all of those interrelate as much as there is a, the, the curriculum ebbs and tides in terms of how it's constructed. It's often highly constructed from, a, I went to school at Berkeley and taught there for years. I always had a feeling from a distance knowing everybody here that it was a school that often had a serious serve in tennis. Uh, yeah, yeah, it had a good serve. And if you arrived, you weren't given a lot of, this is a different moment. If you arrived, you weren't given a lot of, you weren't given a lot of time before somebody served. And uh, you know, as opposed to, my, I remember people saying to me in school, what do you think architecture is? Uh, I feel like that doesn't happen here. But the school published two books that we all know well, uh, Architectural uh, Theory Since 1968, and architectural theory before 1968. And aside from the content in those books, just the fact that they were published, you know, with a very serious commitment from the school to what that means, it was also always, I think, compensatory to this huge demand that anybody in the building is creating those relationships. So as much as the school definitely, you know, works to create them, I feel as if they're often being recreated. So climate, et cetera. So, that, you know, the school changes and schools are really only made of whom, who, whom is in them at the moment. But that, that, that is, you know, along with the GSD perhaps, that's, and Princeton, that I think is, has been a kind of defining characteristic of the school, this kind of equal commitment to all of those questions. Um, so anyway, Ad, the question's a very good one. Where Thank you. <laughs> yeah, well, Berkeley, Berkeley hired a historian of history and theory, <laughs> as opposed to a historian theorist. <laughs> Yes. Okay. Yes. Other questions? Maybe Any other questions? more questions. Yes. 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 So, um, so personally, I'm sort of interested in like community-driven design, and I'm just wondering that. Um, so, in Colombia, is there are there like more, you know, in-studio projects, or is there any way that how Colombia can sort of accommodate, you know, my type of interest, or you know, probably we need like more interdisciplinary. Somebody thought he wouldn't take that. Yeah, I'll take ahead. that. So <laughs> um, I did a studio last fall on the BQE. Anybody know what the BQE is? BQE, Brooklyn Queens so Expressway. <laughs> it's, it's a triple-decker sandwich yeah. where we gave, where we looked. We looked at Brooklyn Heights, where there's a triple-decker of the BQE, and it's in big trouble because it's falling down. It's in total collapse, almost, situation. They had to take trucks off of it, they had to narrow the lanes. And there's a, actually a proposal that it might just be, we might reroute everybody off of it. So what do we do with this big piece of infrastructure, right? So we looked at it as an architectural project, this whole kind of long facade of the triple sandwich that has the most incredible view of Manhattan. And it's one of the only places where actually there is a view corridor from a public space, which is something you'll learn about. And the reason I'm addressing this, this issue to your question is that we met with the communities and we showed our projects halfway in, uh, you know, what all of us were doing because they're very concerned community. I mean, the Brooklyn Heights community especially, <laughs> but we also met with a number of other adjacent communities and we talked with them and I actually got a, uh, this is really fun, I got an email from two of my students last week who are now out working in offices and they went to a workshop, a BQE workshop <laughs> And on this, and they're like continuing to be involved in it because it's still a very hot issue. So, I mean, it's something that, you know, depending, and many of the studios are taking real sites because this city is rich with issues and issues that are alive and issues that we're all working on here, here, and with the professionals that are also not sitting here or people who are, you know, in urban design and 
you know, within the school and then outside of the school. So we have this incredible wealth of people we can draw from to have those conversations. I had a landscape architect on, what is today? <laughs> on Thursday in our studio, they gave a crit about waterfront issues because we're looking at rising water on the East River. So, I mean, we have to bring in experts to talk about these things and we have to sometimes not just have to, we go back into the community and we talk to those people. Yeah, another, uh, quickly, uh, two examples. One is Professor Jing Lu's, uh, Jing Lu's studio uh, from the fall, which is called the Street Studio, that um, is in collaboration with the Urban Design Forum and you know, does sort of active sort of community engagement in terms of uh, community engaged design. Um, Michael, I don't know if you briefly want to talk about the, your uh, BQ, not BQE, no, your but your CD. Yes, your uh, <laughs> Cross Bronx Expressway studio. Yeah, we, and, uh, we ran a joint studio with public health. Per, per, besides <laughs> yeah, I know, it's two highway studios. You're probably discussing th something more at the building scale, I'm not sure, but we did a joint studio with the School of Public Health, Peter Moining, Professor of Public Health, where we literally fused the public health course on the public health impacts of the Cross Bronx Expressway, Peter's research and architecture. And uh, so th they do happen, but I would argue they happen probably more episodically within the third year studios. Although, fourth semester and the Hudson Valley, yeah. No, I think uh, it's a good question. The Hudson Valley Studio has been, which is this advanced four studio Mario mentioned, has been really concerned working with communities in upstate New York, and mostly either Native American tribes or minority communities. In my studio, I've been working for three years with an Islamic, African American Islamic community in upstate New York, and now it's extended to Staten Island. We have these people come to, let, to talk to us. It's not only extractive, we don't just go there and take picture, but actually we try to interact and have a meaningful conversation for them as well. And, uh, and the fact that we go back over and over to the same place, we build kind of a long-term relationships with that community. So it's also much more meaningful and cumulative uh, in that sense, yeah. yeah. I think we can take a, uh, some more questions since we were waylaid by, uh, by tech, technical difficulties. Yes. A number of the faculty, uh, and the dean mentioned this <clears throat> as well during uh, his presentation, um, are also directing uh, initiatives or labs within, uh, within the school. So the Natural Materials Lab and um, the you also have housing. Uh, Galia Solomon office running the, the housing lab. The, I was going to say the Natural Materials Lab. You have summer activities. Right, summer and throughout the year, and we, uh, when we have positions available, they'll be um, posted on our website, but also sent to you through um, um, the office, the admin office for uh, academic and, and student affairs. Yes. So, so there are possibilities for research assistantships, mm -hmm. for example, with the Natural Materials Lab, with the with the Housing Lab. It's a center for special research. So there. Are, if, if you go to research on the DFAP website and the labs and, research and centers, you can see each um, um, lab or center and their um, uh, respective faculty. And usually on our website, you'll see uh, open positions. Yeah. I think also in the studios, um, especially I can speak for third year, that you know a, a critic will give a topic. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, in my case, it's open when I gave the BQE. People I wanted people to bring the programs they were interested in developing. So it becomes a way to continue an interest of your own into you know, a third year project um, within a particular site. So you're sharing certain issues together, um, but you're also developing your own uh, trajectory. And that's, I think throughout Columbia we encourage that because you're, you're really curating, I'm, I'm gonna use the curating word, yeah. um, your own you know, your own education in a way, because as you learn more, you learn more about what you want to actually focus on, right? And so I think we have a really broad wealth of seminars and tech courses and electives, and even half electives in the graphics um, 
representation, representation se sequence. So, you know, you can kind of pick things up that then can kind of add to what your interests are that you've been kind of accumulating through first, second, you know, in the different years. So that's super important, right? Together with the questions that we're all asking together. Is there another question? I know, uh, I know that you mentioned uh, over time of building your thesis question in your head. There really, is there, there's not really a thesis kind of sequence. It's more the advanced studio, so you're weaving in that question. This isn't really a question, I'm just stating something, I guess. <laughs> but you're weaving in your passions kind of as you go. Okay. Yes, yes, you're correct. Uh, there is not a thesis per se, but we, uh, ask or, and encourage that you, let's say, take a position or that you develop an argument um, in, your, in your work. Um, and that doesn't necessarily happen at the very beginning that you know what the argument is, but let's say over your time here, um, perhaps you will begin to kind of uh, uh, see that there are certain tendencies or certain ideas that you're interested in, in pursuing, and so by the third year, you're able to kind of more fully you know, engage those in terms of your, let's say, research agenda or, or design agenda. And with 19 studios, hopefully there's somebody in there that you'll be able yeah, to I think in terms of the site of the program. The, the, that's a good question. The, I, in the 19 studio, I, listen, I'm, I'm used to Columbia, like all of us are, but sometimes if you stand back from it and try to look at it from above, even if you've been here for a while, that question about research assistant, I was a research assistant when I was in graduate school. That was an interesting term. I don't particularly hear it so often around here, although I know they exist, as probably especially with Lola. But I do think that the independence that Mario indicated that the faculty have in the studios, that there is a high crossover between what faculty are doing in their research and in their practice into the studio. There's an academic question that always goes on is the degree to which that's become something other than the faculty's practice. So, but I say it because I don't, my, my kind of snapshot view of Columbia would be, I don't think there's a, many people on the faculty, and there's so many, this is just a tiny little group of them, are preaching an architecture that they've already worked out. There's a kind of perpetual working it out, and Mario very elegantly did that, that uncertainty phrase that you put over the third year in the quote from the law professor. That made perfect sense to me uh, today. The reason I bring all that up is that there is a kind of bridging. Kinney trips, which we talk about a lot. I mean, my Kinney trip, which we just completed with my studio, tied very didactically into people that I work with, professionally and academically. So the, maybe one thing about GSAP is that the studios, for better or worse, are frequently trying to work out a bridge from what's academic to what's practice. To what extent are we a professional school? To which extent are we ask, asking questions that are above that? And uh, so that's something that it's, maybe it's our size and our dexterity. When it goes well, it goes really well. But it's definitely a lot of options, yeah. yeah. But I will add that um, you know, in the school, in the, in the program, practice is also a question. Yeah. Yeah. That practice is not, oh, this is what practice is. Yeah. You know, that is what practice is, but practice is a, is a program, and so, you know, the practicing uncertainty is, is a question about well, what is practice, what does it mean to practice, how do we practice, not necessarily professional practice, but how do we practice in terms of the production of new knowledge, you know, and what is that, and, and all of the ways in which we can produce new knowledge. No, no, I'm just what I realized on the nuts and bolts. I mean, first of all, you, you will be able to practice when you finish here, so don't worry about it. <laughs> we have some very distinguished practitioners of all kinds. Those two guys just got their license. Yeah, who, oh, yeah, the ones you're talking about. Yeah, right. So, you know, that, that, yeah, just to, if those kind of questions are running in the background, these are all basically given, and, and it's sort of the platform which everything else is built. And, and this is to the question of research. Just in case people are wondering, there are... Uh, TA ships, uh, of various, I direct a number of those in the history side where people who have interest in these areas and they're, they're all, you, they all are by application, it's competitive, it's a big school, so, you know, there, there's what in the, in, in the, you know, fabrication lab, there's, there's TA ships. These come with, with funding. So if, you know, you're asking yourselves also those kinds of questions, which 
we all need to. Uh, you know, there are no guarantees on any of these things, but these are also ways in which we do try, and it's, it's built in, it's not, it's, it's a system, it's not just one off here and here, uh, that we try to, to uh, offer opportunities to students based on their interests and their capacities to, to, you know, do, to work with us in various ways and, uh, and then to, uh, you know, and, and, and to actually get paid for it, which probably matters to, to most of us, so. Um, yeah. Maybe to combine both of your questions, I, I, uh, the research possibilities with perhaps more of the academic research that also embeds yeah. so many questions to what is architectural science research, what is building science research, does it belong to architecture, to engineering, in between, uh, where do we publish, where do we, uh, should it be applied always? Uh, but um, to answer your, uh, perhaps two of your questions, um, the possibilities to being a GRA here uh, provides opportunities to perhaps compensate for the thesis track. For instance, one of my GRA just uh, was accepted to a PhD in RPI. So um, um, bringing that thesis from uh, the research assistantship at the lab can can kind of reinforce and, and add to, um, to you if you are interested in this academic, uh, more architectural technology track. We get a research assistant for the inflatable. So GRA equals, sorry. Yeah. No, go. No, GRA equals graduate research assistant. That's, that's yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, you know, because yeah. we have to prepare right, Zina is a <laughs> to yeah. build that thing. Right. So it takes the whole semester to kind of get ourselves ready and, you know, and then some, you know, so it's, and develop this development novel. And, yeah. Yeah. and another secret code, Kinney, right? So, so I you realize, what is Kinney? So Kinney is an endowment that was given to the school a long time ago that has enabled students, all the studios, like when you saw Mario's, you know, the thing with the traveling all over the world, this is paid for. So in case you're wondering those kinds of things too about, you know, who pays the airfare, the Kinney Endowment is, is the basis the for all that. Yeah, so yeah, so that we, we present, could explain that. The faculty present before, and then if, you know where we want to go, and our accommodations, and our, you know. Yeah, that's part of the lottery in the event. Yeah. Basic question. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Basic questions. questions are good. Yeah. <laughs> so for our, you touched a little bit on it, but for those of us who would want to be licensed in the future, um, are there any other classes besides studio that really teach that technical um, side of architecture? Um, in our, we have two uh, professional practice cor courses, uh, one required another, which is the advanced professional practice uh, seminar. Um, I taught professional practice last fall. <laughs> so um, uh, we do get into the nuts and bolts of practice, of traditional practices, but also um, the possibility of constructing new kinds of practices, uh, collaboratives, um, we talk about licensure, we talk about different jurisdictions. Um, uh, in our, we've revamped the professional practice course such that uh, now um, two key assignments of that course is one, the students form their own practice. So we ask the students to uh, form a practice with others in the course, um, which could be of, of any size. The students actually write a business plan and they make a pitch to, um, to a group of faculty and invited guests. And then the second part of this semester, uh, the students then respond to an RFP, a request for a proposal. And so the students put together, and this is what you do in, in, in certain professional practice scenarios. Uh, so the students put together a, uh, a proposal and they actually presented it to a group of, uh, of faculty as well as um, experts from outside of the school who are in the, in the practice world. So those are just two examples in the advanced professional practice uh, seminar that's taught by Professor uh, Robert Herman. Um, that's an opportunity to go more in depth and to have office visits, to have, um, uh, he's had uh, uh, actually one of my old classmates who has a degree in law and is also an architect. She is the general counsel for Rockwell, and she's been coming and giving talks every, I think for the last five or six years. Um, 
to the to the course. But I think you're you know taking that exam is you know <laughs> what can I say? So I think we're not gonna teach you how to study for the exam. You'll probably do that on your own when you get out, you'll jam for that. But I think, you know, we many of us practice. I was telling Reinhold when we were having our technical difficulties, I said, Oh, well Friday I was in the World Trade Center, I hadn't been in it before, back there, and I had to present up on the 54th floor to the GSA, the General Services Administration, for the Design Excellence Program for a project we're doing at a port, a land port of entry on the Canadian border. And we went the day before to make sure everything worked. <laughs> Mario, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. We, te we tease each other all the time. No, so it's like, you want to make sure everything works, you know, so that you can like, then you get all the stuff in the wheelchair in the right place. But so, but I think, you know, it's, there's that stuff too. But I think it's also living in a world where we practice, and there are many different ways to practice, as Mario said. And I think this idea of, in, of inventing a practice, because the world of practice is changing constantly. It's not a trend you just get on, right? It's actually evolving and changing and we're all kind of keeping up with it, but also you guys are the guys that are gonna create the new practices. And so I think that these questions that Mario's posing are really important for you as well. Anyway, we're excited about what we do here. And so, I don't know if there's any last questions. Yeah. Well, we do wanna make sure that you all have time to visit the studios upstairs. Um, also that you have time maybe just to kind of walk, walk around a bit and then come back for Professor Juan Herreros' lecture at 6.30 uh, tonight. Um, and I do believe, Darwin, that there's going to be some cookies and yeah. tea or something with students. Yes, so at 4.30 um, in Buell Hall, um, I will be standing outside to walk through the Buell Hall and you'll get to meet with the current MRF student rep. So we have two reps for every single year, so all six of them will be there. And that will be kind of a closed door um, yeah, you can say, can like, were they really <laughs> telling the truth? <laughs> <laughs> to hear more about the student experience of actually being at GSAP. Um, so, yeah, that'll be at 4.30 to 5.30. And then after 5.30, you want me to again walk around, go visit the studios, and then, like Mario said, at 6.30, the lecture with Walt, which is back here at the wood. And, and by the way, um, I should have <coughs> properly introduced Darwin Ng, who is the assistant director of the Master of Architecture program. So you'll be getting to know Darwin very well in terms of advising and in terms of uh, other kinds of questions that you might have. Okay. So thank you so much, guys. Thank, thank you for you your guys. patience.